Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Pond, awards editor of The Wrap, and we're so happy to have you here for our 2021 awards screening of Germany's entry in the Oscars International Feature Race, I'm Your Man, with director and co-writer Maria Schrader and actor Dan Stevens. Uh, we're going to start by showing you the trailer, and then we'll go right into a conversation with our panelists. To the audience, please participate in the live chat of the stream, share your thoughts about the film, let us know where you're tuning in from. And before I introduce Maria and Dan, let's take a look at the trailer. Hallo, ich bin Tom und ich würde gerne euch den Trailer zu meinem neuen Film Ich bin dein Mensch vorstellen. My apologies, I'm Dan Stevens and this is the trailer for my new film I'm Your Man. Please enjoy. <laughs> Der, das ist kein Mann. Das ist ein Roboter. Die testen mich, scannen mein Gehirn. Multiple Choice, ohne Ende. Und was kommt dann dabei raus? Dein Traumpartner ist ja schon für dich gebaut. Pass mal auf, Tom. Ich bin nicht auf der Suche nach einem Partner. Ich gehöre zu den Leuten, die euch drei Wochen testen und dann ein Gutachten schreiben. Und an Liebe bist du gar nicht interessiert. 0,0. etwas, wovon 93 Prozent der deutschen Frauen träumen. Dann kommst du vielleicht selber drauf, zu welcher Gruppe ich gehöre. Guten Morgen. Ich weiß nicht, ob es Ihnen auffällt, aber Sie behandeln Tom wie eine Maschine. Woran liegt das Ihrer Meinung nach? Dass er eine Maschine ist? Unterschätzen Sie ihn vielleicht? Also, wie ist das jetzt mit deinem Schwanz? Das ist also der Schwanz, den ich mir wünsche. Anscheinend. Es gibt einen Graben zwischen uns. Ich gehe jetzt zurück und dann werde ich gelöscht. Heißt das bei euch nicht? Liebe überwindet alle Grenzen. Sonst wir können doch sprechen, oder? Tom ist ein freundlicher Roboter. Sag mal, hat er mich jetzt gerade verarscht? War einfach so naheliegend. Welcome back. It's my pleasure to introduce director and co-writer Maria Schrader and actor Dan Stevens. Welcome. Uh, and Thank you, Steve. Con congratulations on a, a very entertaining but also very provocative movie. Uh, Thank you. Thank Maria, you're sort of, uh, you know, Putting putting the romantic comedy through a few twists here with this with this movie, aren't you? <laughs> yes, it's a classical boy meets girl, respectively, girl meets boy story, while the boy is not a boy and not a man. <laughs> right. I mean, for for the people who haven't seen it in our in our audience, and and you know. They have they have links, but for the ones who haven't seen it, who, who just saw the trailer, I mean, basically the setup is that um, Dan plays Tom, who is actually an android engineered to be the perfect man for um, for this a woman who is supposed to uh, keep him for three weeks and write a report on him, and who is not thrilled with with the prospect. I mean, it's sort of it's sort of interesting that the um, you know, that the toy designed for someone else's pleasure in this instance is actually a man, not a woman. Yes, how daring that is was, um, or let's say how unusual that still is, was kind of, I felt it on set. There is a scene when um, Alma really treats him like an object, like, you know, we all have been used in centuries and even longer. That's rather the woman who has been treated like an object. Um, and uh, and it was kind of it was kind of weird. It was always it always it almost felt like we are adding some images here to a um, cinematic images we haven't seen that many times yet for instance when alma says so please undress let me see the perfect body which is designed for me it's uh, and then he 
then stands there completely without sarcasm, completely without, you know, egotism or the wish to fight back and just lets down his pants. And I'm looking at him and that, and within the crew, I, you know, behind the camera, there was like, oh, something, <laughs> something unusual was happening. <laughs> right. I mean, Dan, when you were doing stuff like that, did you feel like, well, this is, this is territory I haven't seen before? Um, it's not something I've done very much. Just, you know, drop my pants on command like that. Um, certainly not on <laughs> camera anyway. Um, and uh, I think is that is that the same scene where she's thrown wine in my face? So I was sort of dripping with, <laughs> dripping with wine and removing my pants. Uh, that's that was definitely a first for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, Maria, what what was it about the the setup? I mean, I I know it came from a short story, but it's not very much different. I mean, what was it about about the situation that made you think, yeah, there's a movie that I want to make here? I was intrigued by uh, both, on the one hand side, the simplicity of the setup, two individuals and um, the question of is love possible or is it not possible? And then at the same time, the complexity of it, because as I said, one of these individuals is not human and still performs almost uh, too good to be true human. and. Um, and so, yes, it, it arouses a lot of questions where I thought we are not really prepared for the answers yet. And, um, and, you know, when we started to think about it, because what the movie does is very, very different from what the short story does. The short story goes rather into destruction and and competition and at the very end death. Here we thought it's interesting maybe the machine is not a dystopian hmm, future fantasy. Maybe it's just the more civilized individual mm -hmm. and let's start it with a blind date and let's see how would a machine flirt and give compliments and so there was there were comical aspects right away there and then still i think it's not only a comedy i saw people starting to cry during a screening <laughs> yeah um i mean dan when you first saw the script what what was particularly appealing to you well there were so many things and i think you know further to your previous question i think the the opportunity to to play on the themes of a romantic comedy and a romantic lead and almost to sort of satirize that idea in the beginning and, and those early scenes, you know, the idea that Tom has been pre-programmed with, you know, the 20 greatest chat up lines of all time or something. And, and uh, we quite like the idea that he'd maybe absorbed an enormous amount of old sort of romantic comedies and screwball comedies and that, you know, he had a lot of sort of Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart pre-programmed in him that he was going to deploy um, and that this would, you know, definitely work for Alma and then it doesn't quite work. And so you suddenly, you know, the, the wheels fall off pretty quickly and you, you see him sort of scrambling to to recalibrate and become the human, become the partner that, that Alma perhaps wants or needs. Um, but in those in those early scenes to really get to sort of play with with the tropes of a, of a romantic comedy was was hugely appealing um, because I, I don't know, so often romantic comedies aren't that interesting, really. Um, you know, and I think it's it, it takes a special kind of, of screenplay to sort of shake up the genre a bit. Um, and, you know, on top of that, then you've got, you know, the opportunity for the physical comedy that, that Tom affords. Um, I think it's, you know, it, it somehow seemed to be both a very, very funny screenplay and also very moving and profound. And I, I was you know, incredibly impressed and, and sort of delighted by that. And then, um, yeah, had a few conversations with Maria and couldn't wait to dive in really. Yeah. I, I know when we spoke a couple of weeks ago, you you said that in the script, it said your character was engineered to speak German, but with a British accent. I mean, right. <laughs> Maria, were you actively looking for a British actor who spoke fluent German? And, and, and if so, how dramatically did that narrow the field to choose from. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I was very much looking in the whole of Europe, and it 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 was a 
it was in my head from the very beginning that it would be very interesting to find an actor from abroad who's very good in German but still has a slight flavor uh, of accent which which disconnects you know that's that's the funny thing usually as an actor you're always it's always about the chemistry and the instant connection and here with Tom and between Tom and Alma Dan and I we were rather looking for the disconnections there and uh, and the little traces where you could feel even though he looks so human even though he acts so human he's not and where is the machine and where is the strangeness so the language was an aspect of it and if we wouldn't have found Dan I would have been first of all desperate because I think I won the lottery with finding him <laughs> but if we would have let's say if we would have found Dan Stevens in Spain and he would have been a Spanish actor then we would have changed the script according <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i mean dan how how different it is is it for you to you know to do an entire movie in, in another language i mean I, I know this isn't the first movie you've done in german but uh you know it it, it must change the process in certain ways it, it does a, a little bit i mean first of all there's just the, you know the day-to-day -day, you know talking to everyone on set in in german which um took a bit of getting used to, I suppose, my film German wasn't quite as good as I thought it was, um, you know, just the sort of the minutiae of every day. Um, but then in terms of the character itself, I mean, Tom, it, as an android trying to be a human is quite an unusual role. Um, but then I, I find the way that the German language is structured is is subtly different in terms of where the where the thought and where the where the impetus of the line or where the motivation of the line comes, it can just be slightly different to where it would come in an English phrase or sentence. And so you've got both the robot trying to calculate what's the most human thing to be doing in this situation. Then you've got the actor going, OK, well, where does this thought come in the sentence? Where does the verb come that means that I am now thinking this? And so those are two quite different things that had to be sort of combined for this. And um, it was a fascinating way for me to get inside the language and and um yeah just you know it's a different way of thinking both as an android but also as a as a german speaker mm -hmm. right um i i feel like also as an actor i i would think you'd be you know you get a role and it's like oh let's let's figure out the backstory here you know right. for, for tom his backstory is that he was programmed like this a month ago right <laughs> but then creates his own backstory as we're watching, you know, he he creates a backstory for for him and Alma, um, and yes, I think you know the the difference with this role was that yes, there wasn't the sort of it was a different kind of preparation for the role, and actually the the character creation you're actually watching it in real time in in the movie, um, you know, and and the, the preparation that I was doing personally was more sort of linguistic and physical and and kind of thinking about the the trajectory of this human creation, but. Um, but yes, the, the character backstory is something that we kind of live in in real time with Tom and Alma. Yeah. Um, so I mean, Maria, how do you how do you work with Dan to calibrate this? Because you have a performance where he has to be believable as a human to most of the other people on screen, but as the audience, we always have to be aware that that he's not, and to see see him working at being human. I mean, do you, do you sit down with Dan and go through lots of things as you're planning this? You know, we spoke about this from our first meeting on when we met via Zoom, like we are meeting now in um, in June, I believe, June 20. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, since since this is about love, since decided it's kind of a fairy tale narrative or story, you know, we don't, we don't put much effort into creating a future world. It's obviously more about the question, uh, what is it to be human than rather what, how is an Android built? We don't look into the mechanics, we don't use a lot of special effects. So we thought, yes, it's about a romantic comedy. So it's just, is it just in our heads? Like, is it just an agreement between you and me, the audience and the director or the film that Dan Stevens is a robot? Or because, you know, when you fall in love and as an audience, if you see two wonderful 
you know, people who can make a perfect couple like Maren Eggert, Alma, and then Stevens, Tom, then you wish for them, you know, to get together. And you want to forget that it's a machine. So we talked about this. Is it good for the movie, you know, to, to always remind the audience that he's not human or make it easy for them to forget it and <laughs> for also make it easy for them to fall in love with Dan Stevens. So a long uh, story now, what I wanted to say is that we supplied ourselves we provided ourselves with all possibilities i think uh, in every scene and every take it was almost like increasing the volume or reducing the volume of machinery robotic <laughs> and we had we had kind of a how would you how would you call it then we had kind of a toolbox Yes, um, yeah, sort of scale um, almost. Of, yeah, of, um, scale. Yeah. Like, is it a language thing? Or we worked, we worked on, for instance, uh, delaying, uh, separating language and and physical actions, delaying a reaction to make clear. Oh, this is the second now. The algorithm makes a choice and. Yeah, so there was a toolbox and Dan was perfect in in playing with it. And sometimes I just said, okay, now let's make a let's make a take with a bit more robot, a bit more uh, artificial. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I I have to say given given what's going on say with with Facebook these days, you know, it's pretty timely to make a movie about the relationship between a human and an algorithm. Yes. Yes, I mean, it's becoming more relevant by the day, I think. Um, <laughs> you know, this the concept was already on the horizon, but um, yes, I think we're, we're weeks or months away from, from something like this probably being a, a reality. Um, and, uh, and yet there's something sort of timeless about the question of the human, which is actually nothing to do with, you know, it, it's almost a sort of a red herring that it's about the technology and the Android and or what, you know, what is a world of Androids? It's actually... You know, I found some of the more uh, sort of shocking and profound uh, moments and questions of, of humanity are actually from human characters within the story, the man crossing the street and just yelling at the car, um, you know, and you think, God, you know, that's that's a really weird thing that humans do. And then the epic fail videos, which uh, has sort of long been a part of our culture now, I suppose, but, um, you know, just how odd humanity is, um, I think, is is really the sort of for me the question that kept sort of uh you know chipping away underneath it all mm -hmm. right um i mean it does it does take you to the point where you know i mean it to me it, it did something very interesting by the end which is that you find yourself you have to root for these two to be together even though you know it absolutely should not should not happen and, and i suppose that's something that happens with a lot of of romantic comedies but um you know, it's like there's no way to avoid pulling for the two of the, you know, the, the two people to be together, even though it's, you know, for most of the movie, it's the last thing she wants. Yes, it's sort of the structure of, of the screwball comedy is that, you know, this, these, I mean, from the get go, a couple who definitely shouldn't be together or, you know, one is clearly opposed to this situation and then they sort of get together and then they apart and then they get together and apart. Um, it's just a sort of, uh, I suppose, an unusual twist on that, uh, on that classic story mm -hmm. right so maria were you, i mean were you thinking of of other films i mean dan mentioned Cary grant and jimmy stewart i mean were, were you thinking of, of those kind of films as you were working on this one yes i um i thought i mean i was so happy to to find and meet dan because not only he was so capable of speaking this very complicated german lines in an incredible pace but also you know that there is tom in my fantasy or in our fantasy while writing was kind of the ideal male you know like kind of a timeless gentleman everyone can agree on um and so I always thought about Jimmy Stewart, Cary Grant, uh, you know, not put him too much in a hipster corner or something very, you know, something which is of, of specifically our time, but, you know, dressed in a way which is 
as I said, timeless in his friendliness, in his kindness. Um, somehow, somehow valid in every kind of generation and every kind of in every part of the world, something everyone can agree on because that may be also an algorithm would start with, you know, just the perfect man. Everyone can agree on this is a beautiful man. He is kind. He has manners. He is more, uh, he knows more than every human. He is very civilized. Um, and if you, if, if you continue thinking this, that, I mean, he is, self-reflective he is um he doesn't think he's the center of the universe he's uh, the more we know about him and the more we learn about tom we understand it's a very unique combination of naivety masculinity and the moment he asks alma he really wants to know something about her and not actually having a conversation about himself <laughs> as we humans are usually are right um so he turns out to be in fact maybe more civilized and more educated and more caring and he maybe embodies everything what we think is the great achievement of humanity more than ourselves as humans you know being driven by instincts and fear and desires and uh and so that is kind of an interesting question Aima is confronted because she is testing him because you know society wants to decide if creatures like tom can be allowed to be married or have a job or have a passport and be a valid member of society Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's it's interesting because it gets into, you know, pretty serious issues that, that do have some bearing on, on, you know, what we're going through in the world today. And yet the tone throughout, the touch is very light. Um, how do you how do you calibrate the 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 tone of, of the film and, you know, and keep that lightness even as you're dealing with the serious stuff? from scene to scene from moment to moment from um uh i think it's it was all it was in my in my head it was all there while writing already you know with writing we kind of found um the right tone i think and um and i think it was also to dan uh we had the great luxury to sit at least for 10 days before we started shooting also with Maren Eggert and Dan and I, we went through the scenes and we read it and we talked about it and we exchanged our thoughts. And, um, and I think we were, we calibrated ourselves as a team um, about the possibilities of of lightness and also the possibilities of depth and and complexity within every scene and and then we had to, we took our time to try it out on set mm -hmm. All right uh, dan how valuable was that was that time of sitting around and talking beforehand yeah it was it was hugely valuable i mean a great luxury um these days to get that sort of time and and i think particularly with this one i think it probably more for Marin than for me because i i sort of knew what I was coming with, but I think the the usual back and forth between scene partners was automatically going to be removed, um, certainly initially. And I think that took a bit of getting used to for both of us, really. But but for Marin, you know, uh, who is a very, you know, very human, very naturalistic uh, actress and, and, you know, gives a very beautifully naturalistic performance. And I think there was probably an initial surprise that, you know, <laughs> this was not going to be <laughs> reciprocated. <laughs> and so, you know, we, it took us a few days to kind of, um, you know, find find that odd rhythm. Um, and I think, you know, to your point about the tone, it's, you know, that every scene almost, you know, was it, it sort of starts on one track and, and you think, okay, well, this is a recognizable scenario. This is a human scenario. And because Tom is involved, it inevitably takes a left turn and becomes something else. And so it, it was constantly surprising, I think, for, for both of us that, you know, the uh, 
the, the, you know, the journey that a scene might normally take or the choices that we might normally make were, were altered and, and slightly different. And, and that's where, for me, a lot of the, the fun and the delight of the, the playing of it came from. But, um, but yes, those, those early days, I think it was just getting over that, that initial surprise of the, of the tone. Yeah. I think that Maren sometimes had a similar experience, like Alma puts it in words by the end of the movie. Sometimes she said, yeah, usually it's always about connection uh, on set and with your partner mm -hmm. in front of the camera. And here I feel kind of lonely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I throw a ball and it comes and it just... back to me. <laughs> from wall to yeah. wall and, or i just hit it and it goes seven miles that way <laughs> yes um it, it definitely took a bit of getting used to and i think um yes particularly for maron I'm, I'm sure it was it was it was tricky <laughs> right and so it is like uh like alma says at the very end that she that that it's that it is a theater of someone of the not there is not another individual, there is not another human present. And it's a theater that Alma plays for herself in the moment she starts a dialogue with a machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that is and that is a moment which uh, which is really sad, I think, because uh, because love is and always has been about also an image imaginary world, right? I mean love is love is beyond reality you know we fall in love and we and everything which which the distance between the reality and our wishes we bridge it with love and with desire and uh and actually this is also what Alma does with with the machine this is what people do who are in love with objects and or shoes or algorithms or and this is also what we do in human relationships i think so at the very end there is a maybe we are very limited when we only fall in love with living creatures maybe or what is life you know what is adaptation what is performance what is the true feeling and is it really true that tom Starts to adapt and starts to learn uh, is not a living creature. Is not it's not worth to love. Yeah, I mean, as, as a director, is it tricky when you know you're used to being behind the camera, trying to capture the connection that's going on between you know the people on screen, and in this case, you know, of necessity, the connection is very artificial on on one side i mean does it change what you are looking for what you do as a director i think i looked at at tom as a character <laughs> <laughs> um and and yeah as as we said before the goal of a scene was the irritation the disconnection the projection and the belief we connect and then the disconnection. And this is, it's always some kind of, um, there's always music in a scene. There's always music in a rhythm. And um, and since I co-wrote the script, I was, you know, there's something, and since I'm an actor, I think that's also an important part of it. There is a, um, there's a clear vision uh, beforehand of how the scene could work. And then I, I try to communicate this, and sometimes I'm surprised by different, uh, different approaches, and uh, and maybe better solutions or better ways than I originally had in my head. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I mean, Dan, did you did you start shooting with a clear idea of what you wanted to do with with Tom, or did did things did your ideas change over the course of the the shoot at all? I think I think they did evolve. I mean, it's certainly with regards to how Tom was going to look. I was really determined that I was not, you know, normally you come, to, you know, to a role and you have some thoughts, perhaps with the costume designer or the hair and makeup of like how, you know, how things are going to be. And 
more than more than normal, I really wanted to hand it over to Maria and her team and say, well, listen, I, I, this is actually in your hands. Like I'm, I'm just going to, you're just going to create Tom now. And I, I, you know, make it, you know, we went for the Cary Grant hair color and, you know, just sort of all sorts of things. And I, I tried to sort of remove myself from that element of the process in a way that I wouldn't normally, I quite like getting involved in that and, and, and having a bit more of a voice, but I sort of, as part of be being Tom and becoming Tom, I wanted him to be created by this this group of women, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, uh, who all had their different inputs, you know. Um, so that was quite interesting, and kind of in the in the weeks running up to to you know the start of shooting, that you know he started to emerge from those choices, and I thought that was that was quite interesting in a way, and it sort of I, I don't know it had a, a different feel to it, um, and then it was very much you know scene by scene. You, you know, but each scene became like a little exercise for Tom in that it was like, okay, well, what is Alma feeling in this scene? What does she want? How can I either provide that? How can I make, how can I make things better for her essentially? And it was like a sort of micro mission in each moment. Um, and obviously, you know, her, her feelings um, were very human and were very different in each scenario. And so when her ex-boyfriend shows up and you know and there's things are a little awkward and you know he's trying to read that scene which even for a human is quite a complex <laughs> scenario to navigate you know and it's like okay well i'm sort of trying to read this scenario and break down exactly what she would want him to be performing in this in this situation so for an actor it was great fun you know to just sort of look at each scene and go okay well what are we doing today you know uh, you know how's how's Maren feeling how's Alma performing uh, you know and how can I how can I sort of play with that um, and sort of throw throw the ball back as best as I can without being too human <laughs> right I mean it's, it's a fascinating character because on one hand you know the guy does have all of the knowledge in the universe either in his head or easily accessible and yet he has so much he needs to learn yes he i mean yes and no he he has let's say he has sort of wikipedia you know available <laughs> in terms of he has the facts he can do maths incredibly quickly um and he can you know tell you you know what the i can't remember what the question is the last the last letter of a, a rilke poem is or something you know um he can do all that but it's it's actually it's the imperfections and and the sort of the the curiosities and the strange the strangeness of the human, which is not something that's written about on Wikipedia. It's not something that you can necessarily learn from a book. Um, although there have been many books written about it, <laughs> you know, just just how odd, how strangely we can behave, um, and you know that is what makes us human, and that's sort of what Tom has to learn. And it comes back to the you know the the epic fail videos and and the you know the sort of erratic behavior that that Alma will sometimes demonstrate it's like that that takes some learning whether you're a human or a robot it's like oh okay I'm now living with with this what is that um and I thought that that's when the film really for me kind of takes off into something that's very beautiful and and, and profound and, and philosophical really is it's like well what is it that makes us human it's not this knowledge it's not you know the you know, Wikipedia is a human creation, and it's it's a testament to our great achievement as as a human species. But there's still something else. There's this other, or many other elements that are so weird, so abstract, so odd. Um, and just sort of observing that as Tom was a really, uh, it was very moving at, at moments where you're just like, God, isn't isn't humanity strange? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, Maria, I also want to ask you: Were there things? that changed in your in your thinking about the film as you were shooting it were you you know or did you come in knowing just what you wanted and and you know and then pull it off well of course you are prepared and you want to achieve what you have in your head or your heart or in your imagination and then things turn out different sometimes and you make mm, discoveries and I'm, you know, unpredictable situations. And, uh, and I think I wasn't prepared uh, to feel so deeply for the machine. I, um, I, I always looked at the character of Alma as, as an alter ego. And, uh, and I think within the films I was involved or 
of writing, this character is quite close to to me. <laughs> and um, so I was always on her side. I was always, for me, it was, um, she was, uh, she was the more complicated, the more um, unpredictable individual. And then with Dan and in this confrontation, I um, I wasn't prepared to to feel sad and to feel uh, empathy uh, so much for for the robot and uh, and also for the impossibility because to me. You know, it's really strange when people say, what is Alma's hesitation? He is good looking, he offers everything. Why, why not? Why, what's her problem? So for me, it was always very, very clear what her problem is. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but, but getting into this conflict was, uh, was in fact reassured reassuring um, of some, yeah, of a valuable conflict. Uh, and, and at the end, it was, it was fun. And then sometimes, you know, also scenes or imageries turn out to be much stronger than you thought or become a bigger moment. Mm. Uh, and, and sometimes you know, things shift a bit. Uh, and that's a beautiful, very vivid process uh, during shooting. And then, of course, in the sculpturing of, of the final product. And this is um, this is the editing. And I'm a, I'm a big nerd with editing. I love it very much. And um, and it's all the time in ev with every movie you think you can you can sculpture very different movies with material. You brought home, and 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 that is beautiful to find, to find the way and your path, and sometimes you know to get lost on your way and to turn around, and and sometimes you have to be guided by by the material or the undeveloped film, and and that is a beautiful, beautiful process. Mm -hmm. Right. Were you working on any of it during COVID, or were you done before? Uh, we were, in fact, one of the first projects in Germany uh, during COVID, which we shot in August 2020. Okay. So how, how uh, did that complicate things? Oh, it complicated in every it complicated it in every in every way. Yes, um, and it was all news to us. I mean, now I've shot the next film during COVID and it seems we all gained some kind of routine and it is still a disaster and it's still very difficult to do. But by then, um, if thinking back, we, we, we were pioneers, right, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> we had to learn about the zones of testing and the A and B and C zone and everyone, you know, thank, thank god everyone agreed on this is a movie about love this is a movie which contains intimacy this is a movie which starts in a ballroom with 70 or 80 people kissing and flirting and dancing and so we want to achieve this even though we we work during covid and we don't want to um to take it away from or make it simpler or uh, or easier so yes, as Dan said before, the ballroom scene was our last scene. Mm -hmm. Everyone was very scared of it. And, uh, and we found true couples, for instance, who were you know already sharing a household and then kissing in front of the camera. It was a lot of extra effort. Dan, how much did it, did it complicate things for you? I mean, I, w I wouldn't say complicated things in terms of what I was doing. I think... Um, you know, I think of necessity that the crew was was reduced. We shot a lot of the um, the apartment stuff. We were lucky enough to shoot in a studio setting, so we could really control the environment. But it was a much reduced crew, and uh, yeah, similarly, the first thing that I had shot under the new protocols. And I think, although it meant that crew had to work twice as hard, and you know, was sort of doubly determined and focused, it did lend a certain intimacy to the to the unit. I felt, and you know, you really. 
you know, sometimes on a film set, you know, on a bigger project, perhaps you don't necessarily meet everybody that's working on it because there's like hundreds of people. Um, I feel like with this, there were maybe 20 people. <laughs> I'm sure there were more than that, but it, you know, it really felt like a very small, uh, small family. And that's, I, I love that feeling of, you know, it's almost, it was almost like going back to sort of student filmmaking where you just have a sort of a, you know, a, a tiny crew and every, everyone's just, you know, working extra hard to make this thing happen. And um, it, it gave a lovely spirit to the, to the piece I felt. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'll, I'll ask both of you. I mean, when you think back on, on making the movie, were there certain moments that stand out? And I suppose standing there with wine on your face and your pants down um, <laughs> would be, would be one of those, but are there, you know, are there days, are there scenes, are there moments that you, you really look back on and, and remember most vividly? Well, for me, it was uh, definitely one of the biggest moments was shooting the ballroom. And we shot it all, I think, in one day or one and a half days. And it was so, you know, people were really scared. And we had to shut down due to COVID before for two days because we had two false positive testings as um, as it has been the case in so many productions, these false testing, which then lead to shutting down. So, and then all of a sudden after, you know, more than half a year of lockdown, being in a ballroom and uh, and having a, a, a filled dance floor and, uh, and a situation we all haven't seen since more than half a year and people, you know, celebrating. That was almost, it gave me goosebumps because we recreated something which seemed to be lost since, uh, since quite a while. And, um, and yes, I'm particularly proud of the daring partners like production managers and producers who said, no, we are doing this. This is about, this is the beginning of our movie and it has to have a certain atmosphere and we will try everything to create this. And that was very special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, one of the most memorable sequences was actually getting to shoot in the Pergamon Museum. And and I think I'm right, Maria, we're the first feature film that's been allowed to shoot in yes. that in that space. And and um, so, I mean, apart from just getting out of the studio and being out in the in the real world, it, it um, you know, every time we went to the museum, or you know, even in the research room, but but especially in that in that museum space, bringing in the breadth of human history and, and Alma's backstory, really, that she's been, you know, her her head is in the, the world, the human world of four thousand, five thousand years ago, and so being asked to sort of stand there as a as a robot, but also as Dan and just contemplate, you know, <laughs> human history and the sort of you know thousands of years of, of achievement and this sort of majestic space that we were standing in. Um, it was a very, very unique experience, and uh, and I think just it, it gave the film some, yeah, some sort of really, really beautiful depth suddenly, and and um, it was quite awe inspiring. Mm -hmm. right. It's the moment when Emma realizes that she falls in love with the robot because he's actually on the on the way to find her and he goes to her workplace which is the Pergamon Museum and then he stops searching for her because he's just so impressed by this huge antique portal um, and just stands there and admires what has been created by human hands 2000 years ago and um, and it's kind of a beautiful metaphor also for um, for the story that the human, that the, the present time and the robot from the future exchanged their first kiss under the roof of an antique building. It's kind of, it's kind of beautiful. <laughs> right. So, so are you both ready for, for a world in which, uh, in which there are robots like this? <laughs> I think maybe we're already in it. <laughs> maybe we don't know. <laughs> well, there is even, even in Berlin, there is a lab and, and they are working on, you know, a humanoid robot. And, uh, and I spoke with them and I sat down there for a day and, and they showed me what this 
child, uh, a robot of child size and without a face um, can do already. And of course, I, you know, did my research and I looked at hands and robotics and Sophia. And then these people in Berlin, the scientists, I told them about Tom and about our project. And they said, well, to be honest, this is a long, long way to go. <laughs> and I cannot, I cannot deny, I was relieved also. Right. I just hope they're not going to replace actors in movies. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I think before they before they come up with robots to replace actors, they'll just uh, do virtual, you know, virtual performances by, uh, you know, scanning you and, and putting yeah. you in a data bank somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, what what does it mean to you, Maria, to be to be representing Germany in, in the Oscar race with the film? Well, it's a big honor. I um, I once represented Austria with my <laughs> previous feature. It's wonderful. I mean, it is a wonderful feeling if if a movie you have made or participated or directed or even created travels the world. And this is what happens right now with I'm Your Man. It's been sold in so many territories and it's opening and on so many screens and it even still travels in Germany and goes to the very rural and smaller cities and enters screens there. And that is just, uh, it's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay. Well, I think we could, we could go on talking about this, but I think we probably need to wrap up uh, here. So, you know, Thank you both for the audience that's been watching. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to take advantage of our free trial to wrap pro so you can be the first to know about upcoming screenings and events. Uh, you can also register for upcoming screenings, catch up on past screenings and more by visiting the wrap.com and clicking on the screenings tab in the main nav bar. Dan Maria, thank you. Thank you very much for, um, you know, for a wonderful film and a, and a great conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Steve.